morning, Jeff and um, Reed. What we're going to do first of all, uh, as you can see, I've already put the valve and the actuator in the uh, device, and uh, I've mounted it horizontal because it's easier for me to look into the inlet port. <clears throat> first, what I want to do, we've already hooked up the power, and I've got my 4 to 20 hooked up. And one thing I noticed when you were trying to test the actuator at your plant, you were trying to use your probes and hold them on 4 and 5. What I've done is instead of using my probes, I've connected two wires to the signal generator and just connect them in here so I don't have to keep holding them and dropping them and holding them and dropping them. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead <clears throat> and run this to the mid position. And then I'm going to take a look at the um, trim on your valve to be sure it's in mid position. And I'm also going to look at the, um, the sitting on the feedback pot to see how close that is to 500 ohms when you're in the mid position. When the valve is in mid position, I'm assuming that the opening on each of your, um, I don't know what to call those, each of the, the openings there should be equal on both of them. Anyway, I don't know if you can see the, um, the openings in the mid position, but it, it doesn't look totally equal on both of them. And again, that's my assumption that they should both be the same in the mid position. <clears throat> so what I want to do now with it just sitting here, I'm going to turn off the power to the motor and I'm going to unplug J1 and we're going to take a look at the, um, the ohms on the pot. Okay, we situated the camera so that I can disconnect J1. And as I said before, um, Jeff, when you pulled J1 off and you still had power to it, it ran the valve closed. And that's because the um, this jumper down here was set so that it would fail in the closed position. This one is set, <clears throat> excuse me, so it'll stay in last position, but I turned off power anyway. I'm going to put my probes on one and two, and that's at 519 ohms, which is really not too bad. So you've done a good job setting that up. Now I'm going to check it against <clears throat> two and three, just for verification. And then that's a 485. So, uh, like I said, you've done a, a really good job setting the, uh, the cam up. When you did it, you loosened that. And while you had your probes on one and two, you rotated this so that the feedback potentiometer would change and get within the... Um, the 500 ohms. That makes me wonder um, why the uh, the mid position is off. You told me that the um, the over the full open is off, so we're going to run it to the 20 milliamp position, and we're going to take a look at that and see if we can calibrate that to um, to bring that mid position in a little bit better. Okay, we turned power back on and I plugged J1 back in. So now I'm going to give it a signal to go full open. So um, hopefully you'll be able to see as it moves to the open position. Okay. 
And Jeff, you and I spoke earlier today. You said that uh, it was traveling too far. So what I plan on doing is with the span trim pot, I'm going to back it up to where we see um, the, uh, I don't know if that's called a disc or what, but we see the disc just before it goes and starts um, into the full open position. Then what I'm going to do is slowly bring it in to where it is perfectly in the open position. Okay, now I'm going to begin to take it to where it is just moving into the full open position. You can see it slowly moving into position. And I'm having a difficult time telling whether I'm there or not. I'm going to look in the port. Okay, I have um, adjusted it so that, and I watched as the disc moved to the full open position, and um, I could no longer see any of the <clears throat> white part of the disc. It was perfectly aligned with the, uh, the hole in the valve. So the open position is set perfect. Now I'm going to run it to the closed position and we're going to watch that and see if it is also perfect. When you calibrate the board, you should always calibrate the closed position first for the 4 milliamp. Then you run it to the 20 milliamp and you set the 20 milliamp. Once you've done that, your mid position and any other position throughout the uh, the 90 degrees will be automatic. They're, they're non-interacting um, zero and span. So I'm going to do that right now. I think I'm going to stop it at 12 and see if we've improved that uh, mid position setting. Okay, we're at 12 now. And it looks looks pretty good. Yeah, it looks very good. I'm gonna stick my head in there just a minute. It's set up perfect on the open position, and the um, we did not come off the cam, so we know that the uh, control board and the input signal is actually controlling where the position of the valve is. And I'm gonna run it to the four and we're going to check that again. If the 4 milliamp is set up first, you don't have to go back and forth checking it. Hopefully we get a, as good a view. Okay, it looks great. We're going to go um, 20 again just to check it. Okay, I'm going to, now it looks like we have the, uh, the close and the open set up perfectly. I'm going to go ahead and run it to the mid position uh, just to verify that mid position is where we want it. That looks perfect as well. I think the the key part is, and and maybe in your situation, since you're not doing 90 degree actuators, if you know what the trim is going to be prior to mounting the actuator to the valve, it would probably be easier to set the valve up for your 37 or 45 or whatever the angle happens to be prior to mounting it on the valve. Then sit your valve in a uh, closed position and then you can start from there. 